I've been using Vim for over a decade now, and its newer version, NeoVim, for close to five years, maybe. I love Vim so much that I even use Vimium, which is the web version of Vim and allows me to do this. And so I can navigate websites without the use of the mouse. As you can see, let's say I want to hop into this link over here. I just do SK, boom, and I'm in. Same thing with navigating here. I'm not using my trackpad at all, nor my mouse. I can maneuver around easily using the hotkeys that are provided from Vimium's interface. The main reason why Obsidian and Vim are such a match made in heaven is that both are inherently modifiable and customizable, which are very important things for me. Editing text, whether it be programming or making a shopping list, it's a vital component in our everyday lives. And whenever it comes to doing something, I want to do it in the best way possible. Now that doesn't necessarily mean whatever is the most common. The best way possible for me is what works best for me, what makes sense to me. So Obsidian being my preferred choice of note taking and Vim being my personally optimal choice for maneuverability within text, they truly are a match made in heaven. When it comes to Vim inside of Obsidian, there's actually no installation necessary. All you gotta do is go into your settings, editor, all the way down, and in the advanced section, you'll find Vim key bindings. Now keep in mind, this is not a tutorial on how to use Vim in and of itself. This is all supposing that you understand Vim and know at least the basic functionality. So beware, if you're looking to try out Vim and see if you like it and you've never tried it before, I'd highly recommend instead to look at some Vim tutorials first, work with it within a terminal, and then try using it inside of Obsidian. Using Vim inside of Obsidian is a must for me because I need to maneuver around my my document quickly and effectively. Let's say I want to change the name of chapter 5 and, and remove that entirely. I don't want it to be called chapter 5, I just want it to be the title itself. So I just do 11 up, go here, change two words. I can either put a new name here or let's say I don't want anything. And I do all of this without having to use my cursor at all. Let's say I want to move all the way to the bottom of the document. I just do a capital G to the top of the document. I do a double lowercase g. Say so I want to move halfway down the document to chapter two, and I want to edit the title there. 12 down. Now I move over here, say Vim and Obsidian. I want to do setting up Obsidian with Vim. Boom, all done without having to move my mouse at all. I don't even know where my mouse is. Oh, look, it's right there. Now, one thing you will want to download if you want to use something such as the relative numbers, as you can see on the left-hand side here, right now I'm on line 53, and you can see the relative distance that each line is above and below. For that, all you gotta do is go into Community Plugins, and I believe it's called Relative, yeah, Relative Line Numbers. You download that, enable it, and you'll have exactly the same interface that I have here. And honestly, that's really about it. I can make hours and hours of content all about Vim, but I doubt that there would be an appropriate size audience for that. Every millisecond that I have to disconnect my thinking from what I have to do in order to get my thoughts across into my document, that's a millisecond too long. You may be thinking I'm exaggerating, but when it comes to thoughts and having a lot of them, especially if you try to organize it all through a Zettelkasten system and want to remove as much limbic friction, it's vital to use your time effectively. And that should wrap up today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you tomorrow.